Hello everyone, welcome back again with us at Military TV. In this episode, we're going to talk about an invincible nuclear weapon that really exists, Sarmat. In another Cold War II salvo, Russian President Vladimir Putin unveiled the details of a new generation ballistic missile in his speech to the federal parliament on March 1, 2018, where he gave an overview of the development status of several new generation strategic weapon systems specifically designed to escape U.S. missile defense systems. He stressed that the Russian Ministry of Defense had started an active phase in partnership with the space industry companies. The missile system is called RS-28 Sarmat, also called SSX-30 Satan II by NATO. Apparently, Putin has given priority to build these new strategic missile systems for their strategic deterrence capability. The development of the Sarmat missile reportedly started between 2009 and 2011. In order to replace the aging R-36M2 Voyevoda, or SS-18 Satan ICBM, and coincided with the deterioration of Russia's relations with the West. The decision to build the new generation Satan was not without controversy, because large liquid propellant missiles were long considered obsolete. For example, the United States long abandoned liquid propellant in its strategic arsenal in favor of compact solid propellant missiles. The RS-28 is reportedly housed in a modified 15P-718M silo launching system, the maximum range of the RS-28 is 18,000 kilometers. With a launch weight of over 200 tons, it can carry up to 10 multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles, MIRV, each carrying a thermonuclear warhead. The RS-28, with a total length of 35.5 meters and a diameter of 3 meters, is also reportedly capable of carrying hypersonic weapons, according to Russian President Vladimir Putin. How about Sarmat results testing? According to reliable sources, the missile's firing tests progress as scheduled, and the testing phase will be completed by the end of 2020. The initial Sarmat prototype was ready in autumn 2015. The time frame of the pop-up testing schedule has been postponed several times because of the lack of silo-based launchers. In this regard, following the first stage test of the missile in 2016, the Russian Army conducted a launch test in which some technical shortcomings of silo-based launchers were identified in December 2017. Still, Putin declared that Sarmat has been successfully tested in December 2017, and that it could reach the United States via the North or South Pole thanks to its range of more than 11,000 kilometers. Putin stressed that Sarmat was in the test phase during his 2019 address as well. On March 30, 2018, Russia published video footage of a seemingly successful ejection test, which might have taken place at the end of March 2018, and the test may also have proved its performance. The third and last pop-up test of Sarmat was conducted in May 2018. Sarmat was originally scheduled to go into service in 2018, but this timeline has probably been delayed and initial commissioning is now scheduled for the period 2020 to 2021. If Russia succeeds to finalize its testing phase, Sarmat's serial production will be highly likely to start in 2021. Russia's plan is to replace RS-36 M2 Voyevoda with RS-28 Sarmat gradually by the mid-2020s. According to claims by Russian sources, the intercontinental missile system will have a long range and will be able to transport between 10 and 24 warheads. Another claim to be taken seriously is that it will be capable of penetrating any U.S. missile defense system. Sarmat, if it turns out to be as claimed, will clearly be the main counterforce weapon of Russia. So what makes ICBMs so threatening? Intercontinental ballistic missiles are similar to rockets that shoot satellites and people into orbit, but ICBMs carry warheads and hit targets on Earth. The missiles travel in a wide arc over Earth, enabling them to strike halfway around the world within an hour. Satan II, which Putin claimed is already deployed in some missile silos, is a replacement for a 1970s-era Satan ICBM. The new version is slated to reach full service in 50 silos around 2020, 
according to the Center for Strategic and International Studies. According to the Center's Missile Defense Project, the Satan II is reported by Russian media as being able to carry 10 large warheads, 16 smaller ones, a combination of warheads and countermeasures, or up to 24 Yu-74 hypersonic boost glide vehicles. That means one Satan II ICBM could pack as much as 8 megatons of TNT-equivalent explosive power. That's more than 400 times as strong as either bomb the U.S. dropped on Japan in 1945, both of which combined led to roughly 150,000 casualties. The technology used to deliver multiple warheads to different targets is called a Multiple Independently Targetable Reentry Vehicle, or MIRV. Such devices deploy their warheads after reaching speeds that can exceed 15,000 miles per hour. Depending on where the warhead is deployed in space and how it maneuvers, each one can strike targets hundreds of miles apart. In conclusion, Russia continues to be a major power in developing not only air-launched hypersonic ballistic missiles, but also ground and sea-launched systems that use different boosters. Russian strategic rocket forces are an important element of Russian military strategy. Russia's weapons perform all types of missions, and an important modernization program is underway in Russia that poses a significant threat to NATO and Western security. As a result, Russia has obtained a monopoly over hypersonic missiles up to now, and in the best case, Russia will maintain a monopoly on nuclear-capable weapons in the future if there is no change in U.S. strategy. Russian hypersonic missiles within range will constitute a crucial threat for NATO as well as for the U.S. That's all for today. Don't forget to leave your comment below if you have a great topic to be discussed about military. Thank you for watching Military TV.